Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And today we are talking about why I'm leaving Seattle. For you guys out there that know me, that you, you might not be surprised why. I mean, Mr. Ensley out here is is uh, imposing a lot of very I, what I would consider draconian measures. So uh, we're going out to North Dakota, and why North Dakota? Because we have some labor shortages going on, so we will be going out there. Uh, this is an interesting article that I saw recently, actually. Uh, 5% of adults quit their jobs over COVID vaccine mandates. So a lot of these vaccine holdouts, they are actually quitting their jobs, right? So that's part of the labor shortage is that some of these people are quitting their jobs and they're they're just not, they're not coming back, right? They're, they're looking for, for new places to go. And these guys look like they're looking for some Molson cores or something like that. I don't know. You guys see it. You guys see it. He says, vaccine, yes, mandate, no. Okay. I think that's fine. If you want to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. All right. So this is where we will be going. And apparently they have the largest buffalo in the world. So, I mean, I can see that you guys are jealous about that already. Largest buffalo in the world. They got these farmers right here. They've got this uh, looks like the that bass that sings, don't worry, be happy. They got a turtle fucking a turtle. They got a big ass chicken. They got they got a kind of scary looking cow. I don't think I'm gonna be going to see that. That's kind of stupid. And a turtle, another turtle. That's not a turtle. But anyways, let's get into the life updates. Life updates. This is where I've been, all right? I, every time I, it seems like every time I make a video, I'm like, guys, let me explain where I've been. Because, you know, just a lot is going on. So there we go. There's the title of the video. Why I quit my job and I'm uh, leaving Seattle. So let's just, let's full screen this. Why not? Why not? Let's, let's be official with this. Okay, so we went through demo. Okay, so demo for you guys out there that don't know, uh, is demobilization essentially means coming back from deployment. Okay, I had a breakup out there in Miami, right? So broke up with the uh, ex-girlfriend. And for for those that you, of you guys out there who are wondering, I'm I'm fine about that. Uh, just to, I mean, not to not to get you all in the business, but it was essentially an overblown friendship. I mean, I think that's kind of how we both felt about the situation. It was a friendship that we were like, hey, what if we dated? And then eventually we're both like, hey, what if we just be friends again? Because yeah, it just felt like a, a big, big friendship that should have remained one. Uh, all right, that's a felt tap. That's what we did down in Demob. And um, basically what we, we did down there is it's to transition you from being a soldier to being a uh, being a civilian. So this is it seems most applicable to people who were like active duty, right? Like people who went from being like 18 years old to like, you know, living with their parents to like being an active duty. And then like now you're going to be a civilian. It just didn't it just was seem like a waste of time. Like one of the things I've got written down here that which was kind of funny to me was it was talking to us about how like your coworkers are going to want to just go home after work. They're not going to want to hang out with you. And like in the army, we do all this mandatory fun stuff and got down here, toxic OT culture that we have in the army. So like, uh, I don't know, you got your guys that are like, I'm getting in at 7 a.m. and I'm not leaving until 9 p.m. because I'm a hardcore soldier and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you're not getting paid anymore to do that, dude. So glad to be rid of that. But I do give a salute to all my permanent active duty out there. All right. So next thing is I went ahead and decided I'm going to stop pinching pennies. And I said, as we can see right there, fuck pennies. Okay. So I just, I need to start living, practicing what I preach. Right. And what I preach is that if you can provide a certain amount of value, you can, you can essentially your upside is, is unlimited. I remember I was talking to somebody and, um, they were talking to me about taxes, right? They were talking about like, should we tax somebody like Bill Gates? Because they said, to make a long story short, they said, there's no way that Bill Gates would just give somebody $100,000. And I thought to myself, Bill Gates has given people much more than $100,000. Many, many times, many, many a times, right? Why? Because they provided more value than the $100,000 that he gave them, right? So 
whatever you want to create in your life you just have to it starts with the knowledge right the knowledge of how to create that value and and you just go get it so expanded my definition of an investment so things like clothes i read this book down here the old money book and it just basically went into a bunch of different nice clothing stores at different styles of dress fashion things like that things that'll get you into rooms that you maybe couldn't get into uh, with you know a, a ripped t-shirt and and some some ratty clothes right so it's just it was just a nice book on how to be a how to be a sophisticated gentleman right we should all uh even you ladies out there should be sophisticated gentlemen okay um not trying to get dave chappelle right now okay anyways that i'm gonna put that down in the comments the old money book it's a great book R ralph lauren uh ralph lauren jay press brooks brothers banana republic went out there got some nice outfits figured out about some watches that hold their value right rolex a couple other other watches that that hold their their value that i can't pronounce like odema pigal or something like that but uh anyways that's it's a it's a great book classes seminars relationships family experiences things that you should be spending your money on right i actually have a not painful personal story but you know whatever it is what it is I did not take any of my leave when I was out there, right? And I just got done selling it. But um, could, you know, I, I don't know if the relationship was uh, something that belonged in the first place, but could I have taken some of that leave time and actually taken it, gone and seen uh, the people that were important to me? Probably could have done that, right? So I just think that that's, that's an investment of, of, of your time that you get something out in the back end of that too right you know you, you get your family you get your relationship you anyway you just have to value those things so that was a life lesson that i really learned uh through this whole experience uh next slide i decided to be extraordinary right so we kind of already talked about this trying to double my income by moving over to north dakota um instead of just saying hey i'm, I'm gonna just be average right okay and this one this one Oh man, this took up at least a week of my time transitioning my roommate out. Um, I'm not going to put the specific person on blast, but I mean, God, I'm not going to swear on here. Um, yeah, the place was trashed, right? There was there was dog hair everywhere. I didn't know that there was a dog. Um, had to shampoo all the carpets. Everything was trashed. Uh, cigarettes everywhere in the back of, of my place. Um, and then I had to get some basic necessities, which... Uh, they they had but I did not have because I didn't want to double up on things like vacuums toilet paper sanitary wipes and basically like it says down there anything that I wouldn't have on the deployment so had to do a lot of shopping a lot of running around got myself a nice Dyson I'm I'm so happy I'm so happy about the Dyson that like it just lets me know that I'm almost 30 but anyway yeah and then just these other things that you don't really think about uh if you've never deployed before like i had 10 10 months worth of mail to sort out had a bunch of doctor's appointments to go to 10 months worth of personal email to go through and i just got this this huge to-do list of things that i need to do and i'm moving and uh th basically there's just a lot of things going on right and i have a lot of projects that i need to do around the house but i don't have a lot of liquidity and uh, i'm not going to show it but basically i've got about 10 grand of liquidity i've got some stocks that i could sell off but i don't want to do that i mean if i had to sell everything right now i could probably come up with like i don't know 50 50 grand but anyways let's go let's go next slide here and the last thing i wanted to get into is that basically i'm trying to re i'm reconsidering my my real estate strategy right so i'm gonna go ahead and lease this place out i don't think i'm ever gonna come back here right like this is this is kind of a bad neighborhood like people get shot people get robbed out here people get their houses broken into so i'm probably just going to lease this place um it's it's appreciated great for me it's not a, a terrible region of this specific not great region uh neighborhood but anyways all that all that saying after this travel job and everything i'm probably going to uh get a new place but what I wanted to talk about is that I'll be more so betting on myself in my YouTube channel. So I want to have a place where I have at least two rooms, at least an office and a bedroom, right? And here I just had a bedroom and I had a roommate, right? So that's kind of, it was kind of holding me back because I couldn't do everything that I needed to do with YouTube. And um, last thing I wanted to talk about is 
risk versus risk versus uh so speculation versus cash flow type of market so your midwest type of markets right your mortgage is a lot lower relative to the rents that you can collect versus out here in seattle you're more so looking for appreciation right so you're kind of speculating on the direction of the price that's where most of your returns are going to come from right instead of those that those cash flow type of properties that you'll get in say idaho or montana or north dakota where i'm going to so i'm trying to decide which one of those markets do i want to be in and uh you know how much risk do i want to take on how much allocation to real estate do i want to have so anyways hopefully you guys got something out of this video um i will i will see you guys later after i get done maybe i'll get i'll get you guys a little a little picture with me in front of the largest buffalo okay we got she is a true North Dakotan right here. And this girl looks like some type of, she looks like Little House on the Prairie or something. I don't know what type of people are out there. Fun fact, apparently North Dakota is the third reddest state. I looked at the electoral, the uh, election results, but yeah. So we're going to the prairie and uh, yeah. See you guys in the next video.